this is a very important point. Scientists don't understand why these loops exist in camels. They've identified them, but they have no explanation why only the camels have them. They have not found this type of information, genetic information, on any other land species at all. They have seen this in some forms of sea life, but nothing that flies over the land, that crawls on the land, that runs on the land, that walks on the land, that lives on the ground, that lives in the trees. No type of animal that is based on the land has been found to have the same type of antibody makeup. And that's what makes a camel so special. And, you know, the Arabs call it the ship of the desert. I mean, the desert is a place that can just about kill anything. I mean, the degrees here can get up to 50 degrees centigrade. You can go over to 120, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. You can't survive out here. But these animals have been created to not only survive in the desert, but thrive in the desert. They not only survive in the desert, they thrive in the desert. So they have a special, unique composition of antibodies, and stamina, and strength, and resistance to heat, resistance to dehydration, special kidneys, special kidney function, special heart function, uh, a way of retaining water. Uh, we talked about that last week. I mean, camels can drink up to 100 liters of water in 10 minutes. At the same time, they can go for up to seven days without eating or drinking. Imagine, they can drink 100 liters of water in 10 minutes, but then again, they can go up to a week to 10 days without eating or drinking. Such broad you know, spectrum of strength from taking so much water at once, at the same time not having to take anything for 7 to 10 days. And in both situations, they're normal. Very unique and fantastic, uh, different type of animal. And in the research of the camel, they're finding more and more things. As you will please follow this program over the next few weeks because we're going to present to you some new findings about the camel and camel's milk that we didn't have before. The first series that we did on this was in 2002, okay, and we did about an eight-part series on the camel's milk and various aspects of the camel. But now, four years later, there's so much information. It's unbelievable. At that time, there were only 600 articles on the Internet about camel's milk. Now, there's over 109,000 articles on camel's milk on the internet. If you go to Yahoo search engine or Google, you'll find nearly 110,000 articles on camel's milk alone, just the milk. So the research on this is escalating not at a linear rate, but at an exponential rate. So we have to, you know, keep up. You know, this is one of the things we like to do in Medicine Islam. We like to keep up with developments, both from the Western side and also from the traditional uh, Islamic Eastern side of the world because you'll find that the things that are coming up in the West that are very unique and very beneficial. We try to bring those things to you. At the same time, there's ancient treatments from the, this part of the world, not only Islamic treatments but traditional treatments from other societies that have been effective in the past. They were lost for a while and now they're coming back. And what we're really seeing, which is quite unique, is that Western medicine is picking up on this and they're doing research to find out why olive oil is so powerful, why camel's milk is so powerful, why the black seed is so powerful. And the results they're, they're getting is amazing, amazing. And so the camel itself has become the focus of a lot of research throughout the world. But the key to this is this one heavy chain. It is also has another unique ability where human immunoglobulin merely fights disease organisms. Camel's heavy chain immunoglobulin goes one step farther. It goes better. It acts as an inhibitor neutralizing the enzymes required for disease organisms to multiply. Now what is an enzyme? The definition of an enzyme is a protein. First of all, it's a protein. It's a protein which starts a reaction but it itself does not take place in the reaction, and it is not diminished by the reaction. A good example of an enzyme would be the key of a car. You use the car key to initiate 
you see the sequence of events. Uh, to ignite the engine and to get the car running. But once the car is running, you don't need the key. The key is only to start the car. But once the car is running, the key is not necessary to continue the car running. Only when you want to cut the car off, then you will use the key to cut it off. Well, the key is like an enzyme, or the enzyme is like a key. It starts a chain reaction, but once the reaction starts going, it does not actually take place in the reaction. It is not diminished by the reaction. It is not destroyed by the action. It is not metabolically or chemically changed by the reaction. It starts the reaction, and at the end, it can cut it off, and that's what the key does. If you look at your key, it's not changed when you stop driving. When you take it out of the ignition and put it in your pocket, it's the same key that you put in the ignition in the beginning. The enzyme is the same way. So it's kind of like, unless you know how to, you know, hotwire a car, you can't start a car without a key. Unless you know how to hotwire a car and bypass the ignition, you cannot start a car without the key. Similarly, these disease processes, you see, are nipped in the bud by the antibodies of the camel. They inhibit the enzyme from starting the reaction. So it's like nipping it in the bud. It's like when you put the key in the ignition and you turn it and nothing happens. You don't hear a click. You, the battery is not low. You don't hear anything. You just put it in the ignition and there's nothing. There's nothing. You don't, you don't hear any noise. You get no response. Well, this is what camel's milk does to diseases. Before the diseases can get started, before the enzymes can initiate this reaction, okay, of a vicious cycle of illness and sickness, the antibody of the camel's milk stops that enzyme from, from starting the reaction in the very beginning. Now, we're nearly out of time, but we want to finish on this point because this is another unique quality of the camel's immune system that has not been found in any other animal that walks this earth, period. It, it acts as an inhibitor, neutralizing the enzymes required for diseased organisms to multiply. It is the only natural substance in the world known to do this. It is the only natural substance in the world known to do this. Now, in the laboratory, they've manufactured some chemicals and some drugs that stop this process in various diseases. But naturally occurring substances... This is the only one in the entire world that has been documented to do this. Subhanallah. In other words, it actually prevents the development of diseases by blocking the enzymes that initiate disease. Subhanallah. So with that, you know, we're going to have to conclude today because we're just about out of time. But we want to reflect on that until next week, how this camel has been given this special ability by Allah that no other species that walks this earth has been given. And no other species can survive in the desert the way that the camels survive in the desert. And there are some qualities that Allah has given the camel that can help human beings fight disease. We always entertain your questions and comments. You can write me at Medicine in Islam, P.O. Box 111, Sharjah Television, Sharjah, UAE. Or you may send me a fax at 9716. 5311969, or as most people choose to do, you may send me an email at medman at emirates.net.ae. That's medman, M-E-D-M-A-N, at emirates.net.ae. And as our custom on medicine in Islam, we like to conclude all of our programs with a short dua, a short prayer of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, such that if any errors and mistakes have been made on this program, and most importantly, if any sins have been committed on this program, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy and grace will forgive us. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdika, wa la shadu la ilaha illa anta, na stafurkhan tubu alayk, na stafurkhan tubu alayk, na stafurkhan tubu alayk. Jazakum Allahu khayran. May Allah reward you with the very best Islam.